Hi everyone, this is YML and today we are going to talk about the bias correction that appears in the variation formula, known as the Bessel correction. To be more precise, we will explore when and why we divide by n-1 instead of n in the equation which calculates the sample variance. First things first, we need to understand the difference between a sample and its corresponding population. So, in statistics, we are trying to measure and analyze some interesting facts about the population. Unfortunately, we usually don't have access to the whole data available of the given population, so what we do instead is to take a sample that we hope is significant enough to give us insights about the characteristics of the whole population. So why does this difference matter, you may ask? Well, it matters a lot because if we were to calculate the variance of the whole population, then we would not apply the bias correction that we discussed about at the beginning of the video. While, if you wanted to estimate the variance using only the information available within a sample from this population, then we would have to employ the Bessel bias correction. Even more interesting, if we knew the true mean of the population, then again we would not have to employ any bias correction when estimating the variance, using the data points available in the sample. So, what's really happening here? To better understand this, let's look at an example where we are trying to estimate the variance of the height within a country. We know beforehand that the heights are normally distributed and that the average height is equal to 175 and the variance is equal to 36. Now, because we don't have access to the population data, all we can do is take a sample, let's say the following one, and try to estimate the variance using the values available in it. This time, we are not employing the Bessel bias correction. We can observe that the resulting value is lower than the actual variance of the population. We can repeat this experiment again by taking another sample, computing the variance, and we can again observe that the resulting value is a little bit closer but still lower than the population variance. Actually, if we were to repeat this experiment a lot of times and take the average of the variances, we would have observed that we ended up with a value that is lower than the population variance. Even more interesting, if we were to multiply this value with 4, the number of samples, and divide it by 3, the number of samples minus 1, we would end up with a value that is quite close to the population variance. I hope that you see where I'm going. Well, in more formal statistical terms, what we have been doing previously was to calculate a rough approximation of the expected value for the sample variance without the bias correction, which has been mathematically proven to always underestimate the population variance, being always equal to n-1 over n of the population variance. And that's why the little trip we did previously, where we multiplied the variance by the sample size and divided the result by the sample size minus 1, brought us closer to the real population variance. The mathematical proof for this is quite long and a little bit too complex for the videos I want to create, but I've left a link in the description if you want to take a look. However, I would like to dig a little bit deeper into this and try to build at least an intuition around it. To attain that, I am going to use a more extreme example where we draw only two height samples. One of the things that we can immediately notice is that their mean is not identical to the population mean. Also, their distances to the sample mean is smaller in comparison with the distance to the population mean. The same holds true if we draw another set of two samples. Their mean is again different in comparison with the population mean in the distance to the sample mean is lower than the distance to the population mean. In fact, that's what usually happens for small sample sizes. The data points are closer to the sample mean compared to the population mean, and as a result, by using the sample mean instead of the population mean, we usually underestimate the population variance. So we have to divide the sum of squared instances by a smaller amount to compensate for this hence for the division by n-1 in the variance formula. Another way of thinking about this, if you are familiar with the terminology, is that when we estimate the population mean with the sample mean, we lose one degree of freedom, which is the reason behind why we extract one from the sample size. Let's see what I mean by that. So let's say that we draw a sample of three from some random population distribution. 
When we compute the mean of those samples, there is no issue. We divide by 3, the number of data points in our sample. However, as I've said, when we try to estimate the variance using the sample mean, we lose one degree of freedom because if we have the sample mean, we don't need to know all three data points, but actually only two because the third can be estimating using the mean and the other two data points. So we have to divide by two. As a result, the amount of information we have when we try to estimate the variance is always equal to 2 in this case, or the sample size minus 1 in general. On the other hand, if we were using the population mean instead, then we will need all the data points in the sample. Since we can't calculate the third data point using the population mean and the other two data points, and henceforth we divide by 3 or the sample size. This is the end of this lecture. Thank you for watching. I hope that now you've got a better understanding of why we divide by n minus 1 when we estimate the variance using the sample mean. Please leave a like to this video if you enjoyed it, or a dislike if you didn't, and let me know in the comments below why. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you can be up to date with the new content. See you next time. Bye.